Oh yeah, guys, keep the discharge temps down. Um, even on compressors, like we've installed uh, Y10 valves on like Pitzers where they had the CIC module. We've installed 110s or Y10 valves and knock them down to 190s. Same with the Carlisles. I generally go with a 190. You're going to lose a little bit of capacity on the compressors, but you gain it back with the compressor running cooler. So also those valves, the Y1037s that Kevin's talking about, they're, they're you know, it's a liquid injection valve. It's typically hooked up uh, right on a liquid header. Uh, going into the compressor, whether it be right in the suction, right in the side port, wherever the manufacturer basically tells you to go. Uh, those things are rated sizing wise. If you've ever had a size one, there's a couple different factors. It's the SST, um, basically the saturated suction that you're running. Um, it's also based off of your suction gas return temperature. And it's also sized off the horsepower of the unit. So if you had a shot in the dark. If you had a 25 horsepower unit running at negative 25 degrees saturated and running a 20 degree suction line temp, it might tell you that you need a half or, you know, yeah, half, half ton valve. If your suction line temperature is hotter than that um, and the unit was not designed for that, that valve, in fact, might be undersized. Um, we, we, you know, we, we had a a certain customer they have a dual temp rack and the saturated suction was set for minus 25 but they had like 20 different cases on there but if they had the 20 cases you were operating two cases on the on low temp all the rest of them were actually medium temp so that means that the mass flow of that cool gas coming back that should be stupid cold was not and I had, the technician was scratching his head. He's like, I don't know why, I don't know why it tripped. I, I don't understand. Like a, the amperage was fine. Temperature was a little warm. Yeah. But basically he just, he couldn't, he couldn't come up with an answer. So when we looked at all the graphs and stuff, one superheat was real high on, on the two low temp cases. Yes. But most of the problem was, is that the fact that the other 18 cases that were on there were returning, you know, 40 degree, 40 degree, uh, you know, suction vapor coming back to that compressor. So if the unit was sized from the factory to have a 20 degree suction and it's not running that, it, that, that valve might be undersized. What we actually ended up having to do is we were able to actually float the suction pressure up, lower the compression ratio, which lowers the amount of, you know, heat generated. Um, and with adjusting the expansion valves on the low temp on the two cases that we're running, we were able to actually get the discharge temperature down by about 35 degrees.